Hi, I'm Russ Fordyce with Corian, and today I'm going to help you understand how we achieve high-speed transmissions in optical networks. When optical networks were first designed, we used a concept called on-off keying. The laser used to send information was either on or off, kind of like blinds. It wasn't really all the way on or off, but the system would block some of the light so that the direct detect receiver could notice a difference. So you effectively had two states, on or off, or really bright and less bright. Each change in power state is called a symbol, and we can gather a single piece of information, a 1 or a 0, from each change of state. We say that this type of transmission provides one bit per symbol. This is how information was passed from one point of the network to another. Then there was a major shift from direct detect to coherent receivers. These new receivers detected way more aspects of the optical signal, including things like phase instead of just amplitude or power. There were also new advancements in digital signal processors that could very quickly assemble and analyze all the new data coming from the coherent receivers. Both of these advancements can now be put on a single, small, pluggable module we call a CFP2 that is a little bit bigger than a credit card. Because we can detect the phase of the wavelength, we can now use a transmission method called phase shift keying, also known as PSK. Instead of detecting the power, you're detecting the phase of the wavelength. So here, we're sampling the wavelength, and if it looks like this, it's a 1. If we sample it again, where the phase has shifted, it's a 0. And because it's not based on power of the wavelength, we can transmit longer distances or at higher speeds. While phase shift keying provides improved transmission performance, because we're only using two phase states, like on-off keying, it also provides one bit per symbol. Now that we can detect phase, we can enable more throughput on the same signal by creating more phase states, shifting the signal by smaller degrees. A typical type of transmission is one that uses four phase states. This type of signal is called a quadrature phase shift keying, or QPSK. Here we're detecting four different phases of the signal, so you're getting twice as much information from the same signal. Using this information, each of the four phase states can be interpreted as two bits of information. For example, if we detect an incoming signal as being in phase state 1, that translates to a 0, 0. If the next measurement we take, we detect a signal at phase state 2, that translates into a 0, 1, and so on. So, because each measurement we take will provide us two bits of information, we call this two bits per symbol. This technique enables us to transport more bandwidth without increasing the speed of the transmission. We can take quadrature phase shift keying even further with a technique called polarization mode multiplexing. This technique leverages the fact that light is actually comprised of two distinct polarization modes. Most people are probably familiar with this concept if they own a pair of sunglasses that are polarized. Polarized sunglasses block one of the two polarization modes of light, the glare. Polarization mode multiplexing essentially takes an optical signal, splits it into two, and puts a sunglass lens in front of each signal. This generates two sign signals that are the same color but different polarization modes. If we now apply QPSK to each of those signals separately, we can have two separate signals of the same color with different sets of information two separate QPSK signals. As previously mentioned, each QPSK signal provides two bits per symbol, so a polarization mode multiplex QPSK signal will provide two times two bits per symbol, or four bits per symbol. A hundred gig transmission are achieved by transmitting a PM QPSK signal at 25 gigabaud. Now let's talk about a few more techniques that we can use to take us beyond 100 gig. If four phase states provides us two bits per symbol, we can get more bits per symbol by increasing the number of phase states or by combining phase states. With changes in signal, sig signal amplitude, this technique is called QAM or Quadrature Amplitude Modulation and has a number that indicates how many different states are created. A signal with 16 states is called 16 QAM, 64 states, 16, 64 QAM. 
Each time we increase the number of states by a factor of four, we double the amount of bits per symbol and hence double the throughput of the signal. 16 QAM provides four bits per symbol and 200 gigabit gig of throughput. 64 QAM provides eight bits per symbol and 400 gig throughput. Another way to increase the bandwidth of the wavelength is to increase the speed or baud rate of the transmission. Increasing the baud rate has a direct relationship to the throughput of a signal, but as the baud rate gets higher, the transmitted single will consume a greater amount of spectrum. Because higher baud rate signals can expand beyond the traditional 50 gigahertz ITU grid, they typically require a, flexi a FlexiGrid Rotom solution, which I talk about in another video. Coriant's CloudWave Optic solution enables adjustments of both the modulation and the baud rate simultaneously. At the highest speed configuration, CloudWave Optics provide 600 gig single carrier wavelengths. An added benefit to all these advancements is the change in the relationship between reach and speed. With direct detect receivers, as you scale up the bandwidth, the reach goes down very quickly, making them not suitable for inter-office transmissions. With coherent receivers, the reach goes way up by using the techniques like phase shift keying, polarized mode multiplexing, and digital signal processing. And the performance of coherent-based transmissions will only continue to improve with advancements in digital signal processor technology. Hopefully this video provided you with a better understanding of how higher speed transmissions are achieved in optical networks and some of Coriant's differentiated solutions in high speed optical networking. If you have any questions about high speed transmissions on optical networks, visit us at Coriant.com.